Well, what do you know? A two-for-one special. No, no. This is perfect for us. We struck out at her place, but here she is at your ex's. And now, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's both their vehicles and only their vehicles in the driveway, right? Which means no collateral damage, baby. Shall we let the egging commence? Because my arm is all warmed up and these deviled eggs are not getting any younger. Right. No, I had a feeling this might happen. Talk to me, baby. What's going on in that beautiful mind of yours? That's true. Destruction of property isn't a cute look, but neither is your ex-best friend hooking up with your ex. The way I see it, we're giving them a fun little activity to come out to clean in the morning. Maybe, maybe we're helping them bond. Fine, fine. All jokes aside, if you are having second thoughts, we can always just go home, sweetheart. If, if this is too painful, if seeing the truth of things was more than you bargained for. Hey, hey now, I'm not the one you're mad at. Let's remember that here. I know, I... I know you didn't mean to raise your voice. This this is a lot for anyone to process. And who knows? Maybe this was just a little too soon for a revenge outing. You did just only find out they were together after all. How about a rain check? We call an audible now, but... I leave the deviled egging the car card in your hands. If, if a few weeks go by and you're still feeling the burning rage of revenge calling, whatever time it may be, I've got you. I'm your egg woman or whatever. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's, it's, it sounded better in my head. Just, no, no, you're right. It, it never sounded good. I already said it, though, so now it lives on in the ether forever. <sighs> I'm taking you home, baby love. We will live to conquer another day, but I think what we need tonight is less revenge-focused and more of a bundled-on-the-couch-eating-enough-for-a-family-of-four type of vibe. You know, let's go home. <clears throat> right, so <laughs> this is just a night filled with lessons learned, apparently. Lesson for me as your mother. Stock the fridge better, as a condiment sandwich does not sound at all appetizing. No, it looks like we're going to have to call in reinforcements. Thank goodness they deliver at such ungodly hours. Oh, well, no, come here, come here. It's all right, sweetheart. I've got you. I don't, I don't mind. I'm right here. You just let out whatever you need to. It's a lot to try to understand, and most of it, honestly, I'm not sure we ever truly will. Sometimes, sweetheart, the people we think are going to be with us until the end, the ones we picture all these moments in our lives with, well, they end up being the ones who break our hearts. I think the hard part is knowing when to let go and when to stick it through. That's maybe the hardest part about growing up. At least it was for me, and 
God, I'm still attempting to figure it out. Well, because nobody really likes being told they're doing something wrong, let alone the way that they behave is hurting someone else. And so sometimes when someone hears they're hurting you, all they hear is they're wrong and you're mad at them. They don't hear you saying that you want to fix it, that you want to give them a chance to change. And so those boundaries turn into this big battle they want to fight, even though what they're doing is fighting you. They're so busy trying to keep things the same, they don't see the boundaries you're asking them to respect are just being put there so you can keep them in their life. I have actually. You know that our relationship means so much to me, yes? When I was growing up, what I wanted more than anything was to be able to talk to my mother, to really talk to her, you know, without fearing that my feelings, that my sadness more often than not, was going to hurt her. I don't... I don't think she ever really meant for me to feel that kind of pressure when it came to my feelings or my depression and my struggles growing up. But it was like... there was this need I felt to never upset her. To never be the cause of her tears. And over time, it's like that twisted itself into this need to hide things away. Well, no, no, I I wasn't deceptive. I just, I kept everything on my own shoulders. I fought my own battles and honestly, I played down how hard they were to the point that everyone around me seemed to forget that I was struggling. And then at a certain point, I realized that I'd painted myself into this corner, this space where everyone thought that I didn't need them. And in reality, all all that I wanted in the world was to be held and assured that I wasn't in this life thing alone. Oh, because... My mother thought I was this strong force of nature to be reckoned with. She assumed I could help hold her burdens as well, and so I became her confidant from a very young age. There were so many things she handed me to hold for her that my little heart simply could not handle. But I wanted to be her good girl. I... I wanted to be needed and wanted and to be a good daughter. So I was just there, drowning in front of their eyes. And it was like, it was like nobody had any idea. Nobody knew. And I don't say this to do the same to you. I. I suppose I tell you all of this because I don't want that for you, baby. I don't want you taking on more than your share just because you think that is love. Because you think that sacrifice is the only way to feel needed or wanted by me or anyone else. Because it is an angel. Okay. So tell me this, when things started going wrong for you with your best friend, did you two sit down and talk about it at all? I do, actually. I I remember her being here really late a few nights. Yeah, it was it was a few nights in a row. And then one morning I woke up and she was just gone wasn't like her. (sighs) 
Yeah. It's hard. So, as you're going through this friendship breaking up, I want you to remind yourself that you did try. You did reach out. You gave her new boundaries so that you could feel more comfortable and she could stay in your life if she respected them. But she didn't. Oh, baby, no, 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 no. No, okay. I don't think it's because she didn't love you. I think she did, and and honestly, I think she still does love you very much. But one of the hardest lessons in this life is that love isn't always enough. That there has to be more and just how you feel. And that too, sweetheart, you're right, because because sometimes the way someone loves just isn't quite in sync with the way we need to be cared for. So we can either communicate and adjust so that each person feels seen and cared for, or we can walk away. And she chose to walk away. Now, the other part is that she chose to start seeing your ex, even after knowing everything you went through, both in the relationship and in the breakup process, just all of it, she knew. And she sat with you through so many late nights of you pouring your heart out. And still chose to do what she did. So now you have a second betrayal to mourn. And the one person you want to talk to, you can't go to. And I know, I know that must hurt your heart so much. No, it isn't. No, baby love, it isn't fair. And I'm going to say so. I know, I know your father was always reminding you that life isn't fair, and and he's right, but that doesn't make your heart hurt any less, does it? It doesn't make the pain of feeling like you had the rug ripped out from under you any less of a blow. It's, it's so much to process, and... Here I am preaching to the choir as though you don't know all of this. I just, I want to remind you that you're not alone, not ever, okay? How about this? What would you like from me? No, no, no. If, if there was one thing you wanted me to do or somewhere you wanted to go within reason, <laughs> what would it be? What would you want to do together? No, <laughs> it's not it's not a sigh of resignation, love. I Yes, absolutely yes. I will watch horror movies with you, Angel. Whatever you want, no holds barred. And I won't even say no to the ones you love where it's raining blood and all the rest of it. I know I do and I'll get through it, but I've missed our movie nights together. You you went and grew up <laughs> and started new traditions with your friend, and I didn't want to get in the middle of that, but honestly, I'd be honored to snuggle up and get scared in the dark with you. You know what? You should... 
should we be completely bad and just order an obscene amount of food and stay up and watch movies? You know, just, you remember when you were younger and every now and then I'd let you stay home and we'd watch the sunrise from the wrong side. You you want to? You just... Well, I I know you don't have school. <laughs> but, you know, I, I know you're an adult now. And so if you want to stay home, you can stay home. But just stay up all night and watch movies. And just let the world fade away. <laughs> Fucking fat. My little partner in crime is back. <laughs> I know, I know you're not little anymore, but you're always gonna be to me, so deal with it. <laughs> okay, you start scrolling through and see what looks good, and I'll just go grab the blanket box. Oh. We can't very well have a spoopy marathon without our favorite comfort items now, can we? God, we have so much catching up to do. What was that, sweetheart? Oh, love. It is an honor to stand in on behalf of your friends. I just want you to remember that you still do have so many people who love you. I know that it's hard to see when it has to feel like the sun in your life has been snuffed out, but you do, okay? And is it any wonder when you are so very easy to love? And I'm not just saying that because I'm your mother either, okay? I hope you do know that. Well, yes. <laughs> we moms are obligated to a certain degree when it comes to some things, but I love that I get to brag on you. On how special you are. And I would be screaming it from the rooftops if you hadn't made me promise to stop that all those years ago when you turned 13 and suddenly were able to die from embarrassment. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but tonight is an exception, and I will, from the comfort of this cozy couch, shout to the world what a joy my baby is, and how lucky the world is to get to experience you and anyone who you choose to let into your life, who you let to get to know you and to love you. <laughs> They're going to join me on those proverbial rooftops and scream it with me, I promise you. Because you are, you are wonderful and you are special. And you are the best thing I ever did in this whole weird life thing. <laughs> You're it, baby, it's you. Okay, enough of this sap, I'm gonna go I'm going to go get our supplies, and then when I descend from the mountaintop, we can begin Horror Marathon. <laughs> and I love you too, Angel, more than any words could ever express. <laughs> <laughs>